Um, in 2001, the sheriff's office decided to, um, to start their own drug analysis lab. And the sheriff noticed the problems that we were having, first of all, with getting cases from the state being analyzed by the state along with the growing number of drug cases that were um, coming into the county. And so because of that, with the help of a federal grant, he wanted to start a new, a new laboratory here. You know, it, it's very exciting for us to have the, you know, the DNA lab as well as the drug lab here in, in, in Beaufort. We've had the drug lab for, for some years now. And the whole purpose behind the drug lab uh, when we started it was because we had a backlog of several hundred cases that were several years old. And it was mainly because uh, the agency responsible for analyzing drugs in South Carolina, you know, they just were overwhelmed. Uh, this facility will give the, the Sheriff's Department a lot quicker turnaround. The, before, they, before we start doing casework here, what your option is to send the samples to uh, the state lab sled. The, the turnaround there is, is much slower because they're overwhelmed. They take evidence from the entire state. Typically, well, on high profile cases, they can get a turnaround done in you know, a few weeks. But on routine stuff, you know, burglaries, break-ins, things like that, there's been uh, cases where it'll take you know, a couple of years to do it. So here, the, the sheriff will have the ability to uh, get a quicker turnaround, hopefully get some uh, matches made and get some people off the street a little bit quicker. The lab was initially in um, an old photo lab that's located at the sheriff's office right, right off of Buford, right off of um, Duke Street in Buford. That small lab at first was overwhelming just to think that we were going to have to put all the equipment that we needed to have in there and actually start a lab. And we ended up getting a lot of experts to come down and help us to see what we could do to make it work. And somehow we made it work. Knowing what we did with the drug lab, and knowing what needed to be done with the DNA side of the house, it was it was it was no there was no question, based on what we learned from the drug analysis side, that we had to create a, a DNA lab uh, in conjunction with our drug lab because we were experiencing some of the same problems. Uh, we were experiencing cases that were uh, many years old uh, and that were backlogged, and we couldn't we couldn't move forward with a, a the, the investigation or b the prosecution of the case because we were still waiting on things to be analyzed. When the sheriff started looking at the DNA lab, starting a DNA lab here in the county, his first thought was just to get us a building that could house the DNA lab. And then he saw the need also to put the two laboratories together so that all the forensic services that the county offered would be under one building. John Donahue, I'm the DNA technical leader here uh, at the Beaver County Sheriff's Office. When I started out, well, when I started out in in my intern position, uh, the DNA test would take typically six, eight, 12 weeks just for the DNA test, not any of the testing beforehand. Um, and it was all manual labor. Uh, nothing was automated. Uh, when I got into the field 13 years ago, uh, we, everything started to be more automated. There was uh, quicker testing, the turnaround was a lot faster, and now, gosh, the the majority of what we do as far as DNA testing is automated. Uh, the manual labor part is really finding the stains. That hasn't changed. What has changed has been the, uh, the quality of the tests, the sensitivity of the tests, and the speed. Uh, I think the thing that I really like the most about this job is that it, I've always enjoyed puzzles. You know, putting puzzles together, uh, crossword puzzles, uh, jigsaw puzzles, anything like that. And that's kind of what you get every day with this. It's a puzzle. But the, the neat thing about this is you don't necessarily know if all the pieces are in the box. You get what you get, and you try to, to put the puzzle together and come up with an answer at the end. But a lot of times, you're having to work with limited information. So it's, it's challenging in that regard. Tim French. I'm a deputy sheriff. And in the lab here, I'm a DNA analyst. I would test uh, evidence from crime scenes, uh, extract DNA from any type of bodily fluid, blood, semen, saliva, and then hopefully get a profile, ultimately get a profile from that DNA. The workflow in evidence is that we get a request from a detective uh, to examine a certain case. 
we'll get, for example, say a piece of clothing with blood on it. Uh, we'll lay the piece of clothing out, look for a blood stain. If we see something that looks like a blood stain, then we can test it with chemicals. That chemical will tell us it's probably a blood stain. And then we'll cut the stain out, extract the DNA from the cells, and hopefully get a DNA profile from that. It's a drug lab, it's a DNA lab, and it has arson capability. And uh, working with the fire departments and the fire chiefs and uh, the creation of actually a team uh, in the county of not only the fire chiefs, law enforcement, lab personnel, and the solicitor's office, we'll look at all arson cases the same way. So it'll be consistency on how those cases are investigated. And then we'll utilize the lab, uh, of course, to do, to do tests, which it's very capable of doing and Jennifer Mills is very capable of doing those tests. My name is Jennifer Mills. I'm employed here as a forensic chemist specializing in drug analysis and fire debris. The types of testing and analysis I do are very important and it's critical that they be done correctly and meticulously as I said before. I get satisfaction out of knowing that I've taken a case whether it's a drug, unknown drug substance, I've been able to identify it, and then I have the expertise and the learning of the principles to be able to testify in court and talk to a juror and try to explain to them exactly what I did in a way that they can understand it and appreciate it and know that it's an unbiased type of test. Uh, my name is Harry Roundtree. I'm the fire chief for the Burton Fire District. We are extremely excited about the lab. This tool is a, an arson canine. She detects ignitable liquids. Uh, she comes to us through uh, a scholarship through State Farm Insurance. Uh, they paid for everything. They provided the dog. They provided the, the five weeks of training, room and board in the state of Maine uh, for the handler. Um, she's amazing. She uh, is going to save the taxpayers uh, thousands and thousands of dollars. It allows us to uh, essentially go through a burn structure very quickly and uh, utilizing the, the, the patterns that we see in the building uh, and utilizing her sense of smell, we can, we can go through a building in a matter of minutes. In the past, we just utilized the patterns that we, that we could see, the burn patterns, and then we had to take a lot of samples. Uh, usually, uh, we would end up taking, we could take as many as 10 or 15 samples for every structure fire that we went to that we felt was uh, deliberately set. Whereas now, when we walk Abby through the place, that's her name, um, Abby can positively alert, again, in just a matter of a few minutes, and, and she puts her nose on the spot. And, and that, that gives us good, uh, a good sample, a good place to take a sample that we can send to the lab for confirmation. And also, uh, she's only going to give us good positive uh, results and so we're going to take less samples. We're only going to need uh, the good strong samples basically. Having our, our hometown lab allows us we can basically get immediate service. Uh, we, we can take the samples of samples that are delivered uh, the next day if not the same day and the results depending on their workload and depending on the priority of the call we can get results uh, very quickly so we're very very excited about that. We're seeking a credit, federal accreditation and it's through ASCLAD and we're hoping that we can um, complete all the work that we need to complete so that we can file for accreditation by the end of this year. With the DNA lab, it's a must that we are accredited just so that we can conduct CODIS searches, but it's going to benefit the entire lab because, because we're both housed under the same roof. The drug analysis lab has to be accredited too, and it's something that we're all um, excited about achieving. And it's not only going to be good for the laboratory, but also for the county as a whole to have an accredited lab. We have to look at the technology and scientific side of law enforcement more than we've ever had to before. And I tell you, the reason behind that is, you know, I think that uh, jurors as a whole want proof that a crime actually occurred. It's not that they don't want to believe law enforcement or they don't want to believe the prosecution or other witnesses, but they want it proved. And the proof is scientific. The other, the other thing that we, that, that, that's a challenge for us is that there are so many shows on TV now, like the CSI shows. I think there are four or five different CSI versions that are out there. So our accident 
It's not an accident at all. And uh, people in general watch those shows because, I mean, they have an interest level. Uh, and, you know, it's a 60-minute 60, 60 drama. You have a crime that's occurred, you have, you have a crime scene that's worked, you have all this high-speed technology that's utilized, you have a suspect that's developed, evidence, uh, you know, is a result, and in most cases they have a trial. And then you get a conviction. They very seldom do ever lose a case on TV. And in 60 minutes, this all unfolds. Well, you know, when, it, when a juror gets a jury summons and they appear in court and they get they, and are chosen to serve as a juror, either in a in a murder case or a sexual assault case or an armed robbery case or a burglary case, they they want to hear the testimony, but they also want to see uh, the officers in the lab coats. That's that's the future, and uh, I think we've got a good start on it.